And now sport. From Atlanta, Georgia, we report on football American style. The playing season in the States has just ended, but for this team from Atlanta's Emory University, that doesn't mean any let-up in the training schedule. In America, of course, football refers to a game quite different from anything played in the rest of the world. But these dedicated young men are sweating it out in the cause of good old European-style soccer. In the last three years, millions of dollars have been lost on attempts to get professional leagues started in America. The only survivor is the North American Soccer League, headed by Phil Woosnam, a former British professional. Chuck Brady spoke to him. Mr. Woosnam, will soccer make it in the United States? Yes, I'm confident that it will. Over the past three or four years, it's grown tremendously at the educational levels of high school and uh, college, and particularly at the little league level. Uh, we've had our problems at the professional league level, but uh, we're overcoming those very quickly now. Do you think you made any mistakes in the beginning over here? We most certainly did, and um, mainly from a, a financial point of view. The budgets were far too extravagant at those, in those days, and therefore the losses were high. Uh, but in the last 18 months, we've had time to uh, replan and regroup, and I think we're going to take some steps forward in the course of the next few months, which will see us a very strong league once again. How many teams in the league? In the 1970 season, we've had six teams, but we're looking to go to eight or ten teams for the 1971 season. How long is your season? Our season begins in mid-April, and it goes on till early September. It's a matter of about 22 weeks. This is a different season that's, that's, uh, than is played in Europe and South America. Now they play there a longer season, don't they? They play longer seasons, and at a different time of year, of course. They play uh, in the winter in those countries. Lots of reasons for this. One, we've got to fit into the, uh, into the sporting scene here in the United States, and some of the sports are so well established, we can't go with the winter season. It's a matter of having facilities and having the interest of the public. This is what most Americans understand by football, a fast, bone-breaking game which now far outstrips even baseball in popularity. In the face of this sort of competition, was local soccer manager Dick Cecil optimistic about his search for new soccer talent? Uh, there's been a fantastic growth uh, in the amateur level and the youth level in, in the United States in the last four or five years. And uh, yes, we are. We're checking the colleges and uh, we're looking very, very fondly at the, the young 15, 16 year olds coming along in the high schools. And uh, I would say in the next 10 years, we're uh, in the United States, uh, uh, the rest of the world is going to see a fantastic development in talent. This is uh, going to be the only way that the professional soccer leagues can succeed in this country is with local, local players, don't you believe? This is right. This is where we uh, had planned. Uh, the timetable is a little off at this point, but uh, development is coming. And eventually, within the next, uh, we hope by uh, by the mid '80s, at least, that the United States will be holding its own anywhere in the world. How much money did your team lose last year? Uh, we this year just passed. We'll lose about a hundred thousand dollars, which is probably our lowest uh, in the four years of operation. And we're already uh, headed uh, for a good year next year. We have season ticket sales already started, and the uh, uh, future looks bright. And we hope to turn the corner this next year. You think you'll break even in 1970? We're gonna, we're gonna try. One, two, three, four. Good, At present, professional soccer in America is dependent on imported talent. But if the game is ever to take root, it'll have to produce its own crop of homegrown heroes. Uh, Coach, how long did you play in Great Britain? 15 years of professional, Jack. Uh, a little bit longer uh, over here. American Vic Rouse, another American former English player, is coach to the Atlanta American Chiefs. Is he satisfied with the current programs for training the American soccer stars of the future? The development of the, of the kids over here is tremendous. Uh, when I took part in soccer, and even, even back to four years ago, there was, no, there was no development. The kids would play in school, they'd play it, but it's not as developed as it is here. Uh, the kids are looked after, everything is done for them. Uh, the weather is good, of course. This is something in their favor. Uh, everybody... Of course, everybody's learning the game. Most of the people that are running the sport here are parents that have grown up with the game only in the last four or five years. But the development uh, for the kid is tremendous from six, six through 15, 16-year-old. It's good. Uh, from where do you draw your players? What are the nationalities of most of your players? 
Uh, most of my boys are European. Uh, obviously, I'm European. Uh, mixed with a little Brazilian and uh, South American and uh, Trinidadian and Jamaicas and etc. I think uh, I think the European is is a must in defence. I think they're 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 disciplined. They know what's needed, and I think add that to the flair of the Brazilians and South Americans, and uh, you've got something going for you then. There's a boy practicing out here today, Sonny Carter, that uh, has been signed by your team. Do you think he's uh, an excellent prospect? He's got a lot of potential, Chuck, a lot of potential. And give him a little time. Uh, I think back to when I was a kid playing soccer, and I'd have waited two or three years for my chance. But this boy has a tremendous amount of potential, only taking up the game the last three years. Uh, I will bring him along gradually. I'm not going to put him in the team and say, look, the sink or swim, that's your lot. Uh, 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Bring him along gradually. Uh, over the last three months, he's improved 110%. Uh, through the winter, we'll work on him. Uh, we'll work with him a lot. Uh, but, the, the, you know, next year he'll be a good player, I think. What does he need to learn? Where is he, are his areas of improvement? I think uh, looking at this boy, Sonny Carter, and the rest of the American boys, uh, I think what they need most is the basics, the fundamental, the skills, the ball, ball control and ability. They've got... The American boys are natural athletes. Uh, they just need to learn uh, to play with the ball. The kids, seven, eight, nine-year-olds in England play with it. They need to get to the same thing over here. How long have you been playing soccer, Sonny? Uh, two years in college is all. How old were you when you started to play soccer? I was uh, 19. You'd never played soccer until you were 19 years old? No, we didn't have a high school team in the little town I was from. Did the, uh, did the Chiefs pay you a bonus to sign with them? Well, no, it was uh, the bonus was mostly just being able to sign, and they uh, kept up with it after that. What, uh, what all have you learned? What, is, what has been the areas of biggest improvement that you've needed since going into the pros? Quickness and, and ball control. In, in college soccer in America, there's not that much ball control except by uh, foreign-born boys. And uh, quickness, um, I'd say professional players are almost twice as quick as any college player. How do you learn quickness? Drills, uh, playing with uh, professionals, playing with uh, players that are better than yourself. You give an American boy a ball and he wants to pass it, hit it, or throw it through a hoop. Yeah, that's, that's true, Chuck. Well, all, this, all the American sports are played with the hands. And soccer's a little different. It's played with the feet and it, you know, it's everything. Uh, a soccer player, I think, has got to be a true athlete, we were saying earlier. There's a combination of feet and body and uh, movement and balance and everything all into one. And it's difficult to take a boy that's played ha a hand sport and suddenly throw it at his feet and say, there you go. It's difficult for them, but they're taking to it real well. The soccer promoters have learned their lesson well. Like all other missionaries, they realize they'll have to catch their converts young if the new creed is to spread. This is one of 55 schools in the Atlanta area which now plays soccer. That's 50 more than five years ago. From the ranks of these little leaguers, it's hoped another Pelly or Bobby Moore will spring. Right, now here's what we're going to do. Daryl, you stay back. Let's play a one man back and you play up front. You mean, mean I'm offense? No, you're a defensive man. What I want you to do. If soccer doesn't take front. permanent route in America, it certainly won't be for lack of coaching or encouragement. But what do the players themselves think of the game? Well, my first season of um, sports was baseball. I didn't like it too much, and I don't, and I don't like football, so I just play soccer, and it's pretty good. How about you? What's your favorite sport? Soccer. Why? I just like it. You like baseball? I never played it. How about you? I like soccer. Kind of a good game board. What do you like better, baseball or soccer? Soccer. So much for the converted, but how about those representatives of the mainstream, the all-American football loyalists on the other side of the playing field? Have you ever played soccer? No. Would you like to play soccer? I don't know. Do you know anything about the game? No. How about you? No, sir. You don't know anything about the game? No. Would you like to play? I don't know. Does it look like fun to you, soccer? Well, kind of, yeah. How about you? Would you like to play soccer? Well, I guess, I don't know. Do you know anything about the game? No, sir. Go, go, go. Those who are promoting soccer in America are doing so for a variety of reasons, both sporting and financial. But there's another factor which may, in the end, 
proved to be most important of all, and that's the game's astonishing worldwide popularity. The World Cup now draws as much international attention as the Olympic Games, and success in international soccer can bring the sort of prestige which is worth years of patient diplomacy. Could it be then that the current interest in soccer is an indication that the Americans are beginning to look at the game politically? Yes, I think so. Uh, people throughout the news media, I think, are beginning to appreciate this already. And I, we are getting signs that people in Washington, for instance, uh, are already aware of the value of this in terms of international relationships, uh, what it means to send the national team to such countries as Brazil, Italy, Germany, and so on, and even behind the Iron Curtain. I know that you're familiar in soccer, uh, soccer fields throughout the world. Uh, how, is, how is American soccer taken at this stage by Europeans and South Americans? Uh, I still think that uh, the people elsewhere perhaps don't feel that uh, the American public themselves, the American youth, uh, will become good players for quite a while. And this could be so. It takes 10 to 15 years to produce a good soccer player. Uh, there are so many people in this country who have come from overseas that they tended to be crit uh, critical, uh, certainly in 1966 and 1967. And the opposition came perhaps not so much from Americans as from the, uh, the ethnic groups in this country who tended to look back 10 and 20 years and say, well, it isn't, as good, it isn't what we expected. You know, it isn't what it was back home. They were overcritical, to be quite honest, because the standard was very, very much higher, as our record against foreign teams will show. Uh, but I think we've got together with these people now, and we've got the full support of ethnic groups and the American people alike. How long is it going to take for soccer to make it in the United States, professional soccer? I think it's going to come very, uh, very quickly. Uh, things have a, have a habit of doing this in the United States, and I'm sure the same will apply to soccer. Uh, in the next three or four years, we'll become a stable organization. And once we show stability, I think there's going to be lots of finance available. And of course, as soon as you have finance, you can make progress very quickly. So I would imagine that in the late 70s, uh, there's going to be a tremendous growth of soccer in this country. And so that by 1980, I think uh, everyone throughout the world will see that this country is in a position to be the host nation as far as the World Cup is concerned. The rewards of American soccer could one day be rich. Americans pay well for their sport, and any club which filled a stadium like this could earn as much in one game as some European clubs do in a season. It'll be years, perhaps even a decade, before US soccer really gets off the ground, but there's little doubt that it will eventually do so. It's hard to believe that the Americans, dominant in so many sports, will be able to resist much longer the temptation and the challenge of beating the rest of the world at its own game. 